Here we go, back again with a kind of match preview. Now, yes, since Sunderland lost the match against Wigan on Tuesday night, a lot of people saw that coming, didn't they, to be fair? Thought the double, the double over Sunderland for Wigan? <sighs> my head's kind of been in the shed, so I thought I'd come out of the garden shed and, and reclaim my head because I've had a bad couple of days. Just mulling over that match, I just, you know, I got myself really disappointed, really dejected, really upset. I don't know why. I don't, why, why, why do we let ourselves feel that bad when we get beat, you know? And, and, and League One is the, is the league that just keeps on giving, because now Dion Sanderson's out for the rest of the season. Our only recognised centre-back, even though he was kind of a right-back as well, is out for the rest of the season. I know Billy Wright's back, but he's not match fit. So yeah, it's not the season to be jolly at all. It's not. It's just League One just keeps on giving. And like I said before, I've been really dejected. Why, why should we all be so disappointed and dejected when we're in third place? We won that good run of 12 games unbeaten. And like someone said, we haven't been in the top two all season. So what made us think we were going to get in the top two with 10 games to go? You know, it, it makes a lot of sense that we're not good enough for the top two. Simple as, we're just not good enough. We've, we've, we've pulled a run, of, a, a run of results together and we haven't played that well. The last time we played, re we can see a hand on heart, we played really well was against Portsmouth. When Joan scored that lovely chip over the keeper and we ran Portsmouth Ragged. That was the last time I put my hand on my heart and said we really played well in a game of football. We just say we were we were second best in the Papa John's Trophy final. <clears throat> but thank our lucky stars, we got the result. And ever since then, we've scraped together a run of results. Whether they're victories or draws, I can't even remember. But now we've lost against Charlton, lost against Wigan. And the top two is out of the window. Out of the window, completely gone. Now it's the playoffs. Now we have six games to go to cement the playoff position, which we should do. We play Blackpool on Saturday and move forward because of the funeral of the late, you know, Prince Philip. God rest his soul. So all the games are being moved. <clears throat> I have past 12 kickoff. Now... I have been a little, my voice has been a bit dodgy, I've got a bit of a sore throat. I'm kind of thinking to myself, do I really want to do the live stream on, on Saturday? And I've done every single game this season. I cannot remember a game I have missed this season. I have nailed, right, I'm not saying it's been fun, but I've nailed every single match live stream this season. The only Sunderland vlogger, the only Sunderland YouTuber out there who's nailed every single live stream this season. <clears throat> now I'm considering missing Saturday. I will, I will take it as, that, as Saturday comes, but if, if my throat doesn't get any better, I will miss Saturday, do a match review after the game, like I normally would do. And then get back for the whole match, the big match next week against Hull, the big match, you know. Top versus third. Again, you know, top versus third against Hull next week. So Blackpool, yes, Blackpool are in even a better run. The only team in the whole of league won since even before our run went against Charlton. These are in a better run of form. They haven't lost since February the 6th. <clears throat> who did they lose to in February the 6th? Was it? I don't know who it was now. Did they lose to Ipswich? Can't quite remember. But Blackpool, fantastic, fantastic form. The Tangerines, Bloomfield Road, if it's still there, I, can't, I don't even know. But yeah, you know, great club, lovely seaside. Spent one or two holidays there in the past. So I do wish Blackpool all the best, and you know, end of the day, they, they, for me, they're easily going to make the playoffs. They're going to be the hardest team to beat in the playoffs, but we'll have a good idea because we've got a kind of playoff situation coming now. We play them away, then we play them at home. So we'll see, you know, how we fettle with no centre-backs. No centre-backs. Poor Luke 09 has got to stay at centre-back now. I was hoping with Bailey Wright getting back 
and Dion Sanderson being there. We could push Luke O9 forward to the centre of midfield, but no, it's not his season, Luke O9. He's never going to play in the centre of midfield, is he? Never. And with Sanderson being out for the rest of the season, I think Luke o is going to be moved back to there. But we need to play a 4 3 3. Lee Johnson needs to take a long hard look at the team he has, a long hard look at himself and everybody around and scrap the 4 2 2 2 and go 4 3 3 and have, yes, three centre midfielders. One holding midfielder now, whether that's Max Power, because he can do the job too, or whether that's Grant Ledbetter, and then you have the other two midfielders, which unfortunately look like because we can't move Luke. We're nine to the middle of midfield, it's going to be Scowen and Winchester. But we need three, because two of them are poor. Two of them, you know, end of the day, in, in the whole bigger scheme of things, you know, Winchester, Scowen, Power, you know, they're good in their own right. They've made it to a decent level, they earn a decent living. So, you know, so congratulate them doing that. But they're not like, they're, they can't do it by themselves as two in midfield. This is not good enough, simple as. We saw it against Charlton and we saw it against Wigan. Wigan had the energy, the determination, the drive, the want, you know, the ability. And, and they just outran us. And in midfield, we were ragged, jaded, power look shot. Scowling again, just can't pass the ball. So he, does his, he runs his heart out. Maybe he didn't run his socks off on Tuesday. Oh, did he? Didn't really run his socks off on Tuesday. But at the end of the day... We need to move on, put those two games to bed, move on and hopefully bounce back with some kind of result against Blackpool. Even a draw, even a draw, I would take a draw right now with the form we are in. So I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one draw, that's my score prediction. Have you got the greatest sports noggin? Can you give the correct score? Leave it down below in the comment section. Now, I don't think anybody got the correct score against Wigan. If you did, let me know. Robert Edwards was the only person who got the correct score against Charlton. Well done, Robin Edwards, and Peter your boy, Peter your boy, on YouTube. It's his birthday, it was his birthday, unfortunately, when I think when they played Wigan. But yes, it's his birthday, so I hope you had a great birthday, Peter, on YouTube. Peter, your boy, Jammy SCFC's grandson. You know, end of the day, hopefully Sunderland on Saturday can do it for every fan, and also Peter for his birthday, and other people who've had poor birthdays lately. Kimberly, poor Kimberly, how was her birthday against Charlton? And they didn't do her any favours either. So, I know it's not a great preview. But, end of the day, it's just the way I felt. I didn't even want to do this. I didn't even want to do this. I've managed to find my head in the shed. We'll, we'll get going now. And hopefully, yes. Hopefully, we can change a bit of, change a bit of fortune. And get, and get, a, get, a, get a good run going. A bit of, a bit of confidence. A bit of confidence going. What's happened to Chris Maguire as well? What's Chris Maguire done? What's he done? Has he been back to KFC, McDonald's? We don't know what he's done, but he's in the 23, so he's done something wrong. He's not making he's not making a substitutes bench. I know there's only so many subs you can have, and we are with abundance of midfielders, but we don't have any creative midfielders. Now, Dan Neal's not on the bench. Chris McGuire's not on the bench. No creative midfielders. So what has Chris McGuire... Chris, 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 what have you done? What have you done to be an outcast? Just like McGeady was with Parkinson, it's now McGuire... With Lee Johnson. I know at the end of the re the pre the review or preview, re review, I was upset with Lee Johnson on on Tuesday. I was, yeah, I was. You know, end of the day, he takes the plaudits when we won the cup against Tranmere. He got the plaudits. He got the pat on the back. He got the big, you know, congratulations with the rest of the team when things aren't going your way and you lose and you make a balls up. You need to take the criticism as well. And I don't think Scowen needs to be in the side on Saturday. But if we play in a three. And unfortunately, Dan Neal might not be available. Chris Maguire is obviously not going to be available. Then you may have to start. But we have to start a 4-3-3 on Saturday. I ain't the manager. And I never will be. But that's just my opinion and I appreciate your opinions. What system would you start on Saturday? Would you go 4-3-3? And like I said before, if I don't do a live stream on Saturday, pop over to SAFC Fan TV. They will be doing a live stream. Subscribe to them. Get them over 6,000 subscribers and then come back to me on Tuesday against Hull. But like I said, I don't know, I don't know. If my head, if I can get my head out of the shed, I might be able to get myself up for a live stream on Saturday. If not, we'll see you against Hull. But also I'll see you on the match review on Saturday afternoon. Take care, God bless, and may God go with you. I hope you're all feeling better than I do. See you later.